Hello and welcome back to the Argyle CIO Leadership Forum. My name is Vicki Lynn Brunskill with Argyle. It's great to have everyone joining us for this session. Just a couple of notes before I turn things over to our esteemed speaker. First, a quick reminder to stop by our sponsor's virtual booth at any time during today's event and for the following week. Our partners are committed to providing you with valuable content and a great overall experience today. And at any time during today's event, you can visit those booths from the main agenda page. To ask questions throughout the session, simply type into the Q&A chat and we will address your questions at the end of the session. And now, without further delay, I'd like to introduce our speaker, Ranjan Sinha, PhD, IBM Fellow, Vice President and Chief Technology Officer at IBM Global Chief Data Office at IBM. We are so excited to have Ranjan with us for a keynote titled, Data-Driven Resilient Enterprise on Hybrid Cloud, for sustained business advantage. Welcome, Ranjan, over to you. Thank you, Vicky. Hello, everyone. It is a pleasure to be here with all of you. So we have been on a transformation journey within IBM for the last few years, and I've personally been involved with this journey for nearly seven years and established the first global chief data office in IBM's 111-year history. So we have been focusing on developing IBM's data strategy, how we can transform data into business value, improving customer experiences, driving internal AI enterprise transformation while mitigating risks, and creating the AI enterprise blueprint to guide clients to accelerate their own transformation journeys. Now, the stock is vendor neutral and shares information from various industry reports and surveys. Next. Now, the global economy has been impacted by two shocks in recent years the COVID-19 pandemic and the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war. So the one thing that has happened more recently, especially with the pandemic is that we have seen 10 years of digitization occurring in under one year. Nearly all of us had to rapidly migrate from an in-person to virtual and to hybrid work. But the pandemic has forced us all to change almost at once and more so to digital. Now business resilience comes from having a strong foundation, but also the right tools to understand what's happening around you and the ability to respond quickly to fast changing conditions. This is happening because enterprises recognize that they need to digitize now or risk being left behind. Next. Now what is what is even more interesting is that the trend of transformation has not turned into digital reinvention. And that is why you see a majority of business leaders, six in 10, ranking new business building as a top priority. And they're doing it as digital businesses because the digital businesses are more scalable, they're more resilient to change and easier to sustain. This new urgency is a global phenomenon. A majority of leaders in every region say the topic is a top three priority. The urgency for building new businesses reflects the belief that today's products and services will be insufficient for addressing disruptions and meeting a sustainable future. In fact, according to a recent survey by McKinsey, Business leaders predict that by 2026, half of their revenues will come from products, services, or businesses that haven't yet been created. Therefore, companies are more likely now than in prior years to concentrate on building new businesses. So there is a new urgency to build new and more resilient businesses that create advantage for the long haul by taking advantage of uh, technologies like the cloud and hybrid cloud and AI, and becoming more client-centric on how they operate. According to a recent Dun and Bradstreet report, the rapid advances in areas like artificial intelligence are conforming um, con the, the fundamental importance of data. The quality of your insights or answers depends on the questions you ask and the quality of the data that you use. Next. Now, data challenges are what makes such transformations hard. Today, data is more dispersed, 
dynamic, diverse, difficult to manage than ever before. Enterprises must juggle complex multi-vendor data environments, siloed data sets, and long data preparation cycles, all the while maintaining a secure and compliant data governance strategy. Complexity also increases with acquisitions, which is a natural part of what happens in any large enterprise. So moreover, 80% of time is spent preparing data, building AI models, versus building these AI models. And this is so very inefficient. So let me share a few more statistics uh, that's on the slide. So a 68% of enterprise data is not analyzed. So there is untapped potential. 80% of time is spent on data cleaning, integration, and preparation, which again reduces the time for insight generation. Over 80% of enterprises say that data quality is a barrier to their data integration projects. And 82% of enterprises are inhibited by data silos. So you can see while there is a lot of data, there is still a lot of potential to benefit from it. So the better an organization or an enterprise is in making use of the data, the more it understands the processes within and the more resilient that it can be. Next. Now it needs to all start with designing the data strategy. So for organizations, for organizations without a strategy, putting data to work across an organization that fully realizes its potential will be very difficult. And that's why uh, we worked to create a replicable six-step framework for designing and implementing a data strategy. So based on insights from various industry data leaders, this framework can help take advantage of best-in-class technologies while making the use of, your, of, of their efforts, talents, and strengths as an organization. So we use the six-step framework to ensure the roles of people, processes, and technology are outlined with an actionable data strategy vision. So first is understand the business objectives. So connect your data strategy with the business strategy. As you know, at the end of the day, the initiatives that get the most momentum and buy-in are the ones that are directly tied to the business strategy. Second, Assess the current state. So understand the pain points, discover blockers and gaps that with better quality data or better data integration can solve. What are the barriers to delivering employees, leaders, and customers an authentic data-first experience? Third, map out the data strategy for the future. Establish metrics of success and cross-functional needs to support multiple use cases. So your organization should break down the blueprint or map up its data implementation strategy into, into three segments. So you can begin with a target blueprint outlining how your organization will architect the technology solution. Secondly, create a target operating model that outlines how the new solution um, will work operationally. In other words, how it will be governed, maintained, and improved. And finally, develop an implementation roadmap that explains how your organization gets to its target blueprint and operating model in a step-by-step -step process. Fourth, establish controls. Here's where you can outline the data governance policy based on quality, privacy, and security. Fifth is creating the integrated solutions. So you can start by thinking about what you can achieve that's valuable and viable in a short amount of time and collecting small wins and learnings along the way. So define out of the possible projects that provide uh, business outcomes so you can build that momentum. Six, scale your teams and processes and effectively communicate how much your efforts are paying off. It is important to understand all elements of this change, how to navigate it, how to learn through failing fast, and how to change eventually the culture of the enterprise. So once the data strategy is in place, it must also be able to 
uh, continue to evolve in the face of new headwinds, governance challenges, or changes in the market, such as laws and regulations and, and new technologies. Next. So the ladder to AI model um, can be used to assess the maturity of an organization in terms of being an AI enterprise. It provides a guiding principle for organizations to transform their business by providing four key areas to consider, how you collect data, organize data, analyze data, and ultimately infuse AI into the various workflows. Collect is how you get access to data. It is very important that access to relevant data should be made as simple for users within an organization as possible. Organize is how you create a trusted and governed analytics foundation. Analyze, this is how you can become insights driven at scale. And infuse is how you embed AI into the business in a trusted and transparent manner. And this assumes that you're obviously monetizing your data assess, uh, estates in a multi-cloud environment that allows you to take advantage of the data and applications across any cloud uh, environment. Next. So before, mostly data scientists and business analysts consume data for useful insights. Now, everyone needs access to consumable um, data for insights in sales to rapidly respond to client needs, in HR to attract and retain top talent by processing large number of applications per month, in marketing to discover uh, fast changing consumer behavior in IT to innovate and modernize apps and infrastructure so that you can focus more on the strategic projects and finance to set reliable forecasts and volatile conditions for improving time to decision and in operations to continuously improve automated processes and for fast uh, speed to uh, insights. In the next slide, Based on a survey of business leaders on how they're using the data today, it turns out the most common answer was to increase revenue. That was around 37%. For those in retail, um, the data to increase revenue jumps to 47%. So these findings indicate that data is frequently applied for proactive growth and revenue generating activities. Now, using data to improve uh, customer service and retain existing customers is also a prevalent practice, as it is obviously more challenging to acquire new businesses. And using data to protect and reduce risk exposure continues to be crucial. That's shown on the right hand side. Next. Now, resilient technology is critical in maintaining uninterrupted services for customers and servicing them during peak times. So this requires a resilient infrastructure with heightened visibility and transparency across the technology stack to keep the organization functioning in the event of, let's say, a cyber attack or data corruption, um, catastrophic uh, system failure, or other types of incidents. The resilient technology needs to be agile scalable, flexible, recoverable, interoperable. And in, in, and in addition, uh, resilience needs to exist not only in the architecture and the design, but also through the deployment and ongoing monitoring. Now, as business models, relationships, and transactions become ever more digitally based, and as the technologies continue to advance, digitalization will play an increasing role in resilience. So the level of digital information within the organization combined with that available in the digital world can enhance the organization's understanding, preparation, monitoring, response, and recovery related to crisis. And your various technologies, data mining, analytics, visualization, they can power risk monitoring and reporting, while digitalization, AI, and, and the digital twins can also be harnessed to provide predictive insights, coordinate responses, 
and execute communications across silos, supply chains and, and stakeholder groups. Hence, digitalization can be an enabler of end-to-end -end organizational resilience. In the next slide, we look at the levels of resilience in various organizations and, and the level of maturity. So understanding the components behind life cycle allows an organization to chart what is technology resilience journey looks like through four maturity levels. Levels one and two are the foundational capabilities, while levels three and four are more advanced. So level one um, around um, uh, ad hoc resilience consists of basic capabilities where resilience is left to individuals and system owners and monitoring involves users and customers reporting system outages. Level two, you know, passive resilience, consists of uh, capabilities where resilience is through manual backups, duplicate systems, daily data replication. There is also some monitoring at the platform or data center level for system outages. The level three consists of active resilience through failover. So resilience um, exists through active synchronization of application systems and databases and active monitoring at the application level for early indicators of performance and stability issues. Level four consists of inherent resilience by design. The resilience is architected into the technology stack from the start through inherent redundancy and active monitoring at the data level, which includes anomaly detection and mitigation. In fact, a recent Dun & Bradstreet survey found that 27% of leaders rate their business resilience during turbulent times as extremely resilient. So given recent uncertainties, more businesses need to attain a higher level of resilience. Next slide. The next couple of slides, um, I, I walk through a few aspects of designing for IT and data resilience, um, which is more relevant to from a CIO or a CDO and, and a CTO point of view. So from an architecture and design, so mature, mature organizations incorporate um, technology resilience into enterprise design and architecture. The resilient designs incorporate elements of lessons learned from operations, incidents, and industry trends to make risk-informed technology investments. Pre-mortems, where you can run pre-mortems early in a project to identify all the things that might go wrong and why. In fact, we recently ran pre-mortems over the last few weeks that allowed us to develop tactical approaches to um, potential issues while working with with the product offering to uh, provide uh, patches uh, to, to, uh, to some ongoing operational um, gaps. Encourage teams so uh, to run pre mortems early in the project. And so teams anticipate problems and iteratively build up and uh, trained to respond to complete system outages. Third is a scale root cause analysis reviews, where you can inspire teams to share their stories of surprise and enable team members across the organization to understand how our systems actually work. Chaos engineering is a disciplined approach to finding failures before they become outages and building confidence in a system's um, capability to um, withstand turbulent conditions in production. This involves running experiments that test a team's ability to respond to a simulated crisis. So these and other such practices help teams to build a resilience. Breakdown silos is, is obviously important in any large organization. Businesses today do not exist in isolation. It is really necessary to partner with others uh, within and outside the organization for support and guidance as well as for expertise and tools to help businesses thrive uh, with cross view collaboration. For example, limiting the effect of an attack or vulnerability requires coordination and collaboration between, let's say, the CISO and, and the, the CIO and, and the business. 
the CISO may be prioritizing technologies to prevent cyber attacks, but perhaps not prioritizing enough rapid recovery after an attack, while the CIO and business may be more concerned with the recovery. Hence, all three need to work together to ensure the right focus on prevention and recovery. Six is the blame-free culture. Individuals need to be able to speak freely about mistakes. When problems arise, teams and managers don't look for whom to blame. They should focus on fixing the problem and preventing reoccurrences. And, and teams should ideally celebrate members who expose vulnerabilities and weaknesses as necessary to build more uh, resilient technology. And seventh, of course, very important, is the metrics-driven approach where you relentlessly measure performance and focus on incidents created. So teams, they measure their own performance, um, focus on which incidents um, are created, um, and so that uh, they really dive uh, help in um, uh, finding the root causes of our various issues. Next slide. I touched upon the data strategy earlier. Um, it is really important to establish the holistic enterprise-wide data strategy as an architecture that helps enable broad access to effective, high-quality data and a means for maintaining access and governance. So organizations with a um, holistic data strategy are more likely to be innovative, competitive, and resilient um, thanks to various um, advances that allow them to automate business processes, make better predictions, and empower teams to make smarter and more uh, data-driven decisions. And also keep track of opportunities in a rapidly changing environment with an advanced data strategy. Hybrid Cloud is we develop critical applications to our hybrid cloud platform, which allows us to move workloads seamlessly across different public and private cloud environments in the event of a disruption in one region or data center. And it enables companies to reap the benefits of different data environments through a single integrated uh, fabric at its core. And it allows developer teams to employ agile practices with a common set of processes and deploy workloads across environments regardless of uh, the physical location. AI readiness is becoming increasingly urgent as organizations need to effectively prepare for and adopt artificial intelligence technologies. This equips all business units with the necessary knowledge, skills, tools, and resources to embark on the AI journey confidently and successfully. We need to standardize um, the AI processes reduce model monitoring efforts, and manage risks of deploying AI. The vision is to have 100% of AI systems across an enterprise enabled by continuous compliance and automation to ensure ongoing efficiency, consistency, and helping business units to be AI ready for the emerging AI regulations and, and the best practices. And staying informed. This is an ongoing process. We need to be continually be informed on current and emerging threats to an industry. Automation enables us to improve performance and reduce operational cost. Um, and this requires that you break down the most complex systems into a series of discrete and repeatable steps. And, and this allows you to uh, evaluate which steps can be uh, can, can most easily automate first. And the more you eliminate, simplify, and automate steps, the easier it is to understand the process and potential issues that may crop up um, in the future. Data governance and data sovereignty. Trusted data is important across the enterprise. This helps to uh, develop insights that can be trusted and hence actionable. Uh, cybersecurity and quantum safe. Well, the quantum era is on the horizon with announcements of progress on a fairly regular basis these days. However, the need for quantum safe solutions is more immediate. So business technology and security leaders face an urgent need to develop a quantum safe strategy and, and a roadmap. The future of quantum computers will pose a threat in today's standard security, such as uh, the public key encryption. So upgrading the world's cybersecurity for the era of quantum computing is a new challenge that will take uh, um, years. So it's crucial that anyone with critical data to secure begins working on this now. So we 
um, considered several practical approaches that will help to make the business become more resilient from an IT and, and data perspective. Um, next slide. So managing data effectively enables business leaders to manage risks, reduce costs, and see what's happening across an organization to accelerate revenue and transform their business. So it is necessary to dedicate time and resources for data strategy. So the three key benefits of becoming data-driven enterprise are first is productivity gains and cost reduction. This is the focus for many organizations today. Second is reduce the risks by enhancing privacy, regulatory compliance, um, data protection and security. And third is speed and agility for uh, the revenue growth with faster access to data and insights and accelerating large scale transformation and modernization. Uh, next slide. So I've shared a couple of links here for you to learn more um, of starting the journey towards becoming a data-driven enterprise. Um, you can get your guide uh, for building a data-driven enterprise. And second, you can learn from some of our experience at the IBM Chief Data Office organization. So um, there's uh, quite a few case studies uh, based upon our experience over the last few years. Uh, the next slide is probably the last, then I'll um, uh, take some questions. So to conclude, um, Achieving resilience is not a one-time activity, rather it's an ongoing process and takes time to evolve and mature. So for um, long-term success, IT organizations need both um, reliability and resilience. It is necessary to understand what you possess and, and having visibility and transparency into what you have will bring focus on what you need to develop the strategy for resilience. Instrumenting your processes and solutions will be key in ensuring the data-driven approach and um, help in ensuring the much needed transparency and expose issues and prepare better for the future. Um, so I've used quite a few references uh, for, the, uh, for the stock. They're displayed on the right-hand side and it comes from a diverse range of companies. Um, so let's see how much time I have for uh, Q&A, maybe a couple of minutes. Quite a few very interesting questions. Um, maybe I'll take um, the question around, given that uh, limited time is, uh, what's the best way to manage the uh, the cyber skills gap? And well, it's, it's just not a cyber skills. I'm sure there's a skills gap um, across the board and with new technologies that's being introduced on a regular basis, uh, be it in the AI side of things or on the, the security and quantum. Um, it's, uh, this is really urgent. And so it, it's, it's really important uh, to um, ensure that your um, talent is uh, continuously upskilling um, in these technologies, that they're exposed to it. Um, and, and more importantly, it's about um, not just the theoretical knowledge of it, but it's the practical um, know-how of applying those uh, new skill sets. That's really the key. Um, and so, um, and uh, so my view is that it's important to um, focus on continuous learning with a growth mindset, um, define um, certain projects that's out of the possible, have a um, diverse range of cross-functional team members from the business as well as engineering and, and working on the problem that the uh, specific business outcome. And so that allows one to practice and apply what they've learned. But this is a really urgent need. We have to continuously upskill and learn. Uh, there's no two ways about it. But it's a, it's a great few questions. I wish I had a lot more time um, to answer these questions. But but the, the links that I provided on the right-hand side will probably answer most of the questions uh, that's addressed uh, by you. Great questions, by the way. So thank you very much um, uh, for... Um, uh, listening to this presentation. It's been a pleasure to be here with all of you. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, Ranjan. That was an excellent keynote. So much information to, to digest. I'm sure you'll hear from some of the folks listening. Um, this session, along with all of today's content, will be available on demand following the event. So if you would like to rewatch it, you certainly can. Thank you again.